Man Up, brought to you by Construction Professionals, a program dedicated to inspiring and helping men live lives of heroic virtue. Join Joe Stopulus and Father Zach Kowski every Monday at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. And now, it's time to Man Up. Another year goes by. Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios, heard on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM around the globe, streaming online at iowacatholicradio.com and on the Iowa Catholic Radio app. Please subscribe to our podcast and iTunes and like us on Facebook. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zakowski. Today we're joined in studio by Adam Story, and our topic is the 50th anniversary of Humane Vitae. Father Zach, would you please open us up in prayer? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, you are the giver of every good gift. We thank you for the gift of our sexuality. We thank you for the gift of life that you have invited us to partake in as co-creators with you. We ask you to bless all married couples in a special way. Give priests and bishops, those in leadership positions, the courage to speak boldly and proudly about our faith. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, it, today is being recorded on August 14th, though we know this will not broadcast until September due to our very popular recording studio. We have people are Tons lining people up, in and out lining up yeah. uh, to be on the show. But uh, knowing that we're talking about Humana Vitae in the second segment, uh, you thought it would be appropriate to talk about the very special day today. Yeah, St. Maximilian Colby. I was talking about my anniversary, but that's Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're both important. Uh, let's talk about Colby first. Okay, that's probably more important. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Thank you very much. Thank you. So our listeners probably know the story of St. Maximilian Colby, his, that he was a uh, Polish Franciscan priest. Uh, that he was very much involved with a newspaper, and that newspaper was spoke out boldly against the Nazis. So he was rounded up along with others and taken to Auschwitz, uh, to the camp there. And uh, the story goes that uh, when if people tried to escape, that they would execute 10 people. So that discouraged people from trying to escape. Well, uh, one day someone tried to escape, and so they lined up, they picked out randomly 10 uh, 10 people uh, to execute as punishment. And one of them, one of these people rounded up was a father and a husband. And he broke down and started weeping and begged that they not kill him because he was a father of a family. And so uh, Maximilian Colby stepped out of line and the Gestapo asked him, who are you? And he said, I, I am a Catholic priest and uh, didn't say he was Polish, not a Franciscan didn't say his name, but, but just he, said, I am a Catholic and priest. And asked to take the place. And of took this, his place. Yeah. So, uh, and then he was, even the guards who were guarding the, the area where they were kept in this pit in the ground, uh, the, the, those who were sentenced to starvation, uh, death by starvation, the guards wanted to be close to Maximilian Colby because he was such a manly guy. Uh, they were impressed by him. Uh, so he was the last one to... To go, they ended um, up poisoning him, right? They, ended, they didn't. They had, even, yeah, they, they had to poison he him. He was because singing and, and praying, and they ended up just not lethal letting injection. him die. Yeah, they ended so up not letting him die. By two weeks went by, yeah, and he was still alive uh, without without food and water. So, yeah, they had to give him the lethal injection. So, anyway, what a what a manly saint! What an awesome ex- uh, example for us of self sacrifice. Yeah, and I think one of the coolest story, parts of his story is that the guy who he saved was at his canonization mm-hmm. there. Uh, yeah, a tremendous example of self-sacrifice, and one of my favorite one of my favorite saints. Uh, I was lucky to get married on the same day as his anniversary because it was now double or our anniversary, the same day as his uh, feast day. And it's do whatever you can get, read, watch some episodes, watch uh, documentaries on him. He's such an inspirational figure, mm-hmm. uh, and he's again a man of our times. Uh, this was not that long ago that he was alive and preaching. So we're going to head to a short break. When we return, Adam Story will be in studio with us. So stick around, and we'll be right back. Thank you, Construction Professionals, for underwriting our show, Man Up. Construction Professionals have been long supporters of Iowa Catholic Radio, and we've seen their work firsthand. It's very impressive. They do remodeling or new construction that is innovative, functional, and designing what you want. cpcustomhomes.com. This is Iowa Catholic Radio. 
Everyone lives their life 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. How we use that time directly affects if our life will leave a significant impact or not. Every year, Blessman International leads teams of Central Islands on 12-day, all-inclusive experiences filled with life-changing personal interaction with the beautiful African children that we serve. Teams are forming now for 2019. Space is limited, so make a decision today to use your time to do something significant in the life of an African child. Learn more and apply for a trip today at www.blessmaninternational.org. Do you want to really know your faith and why we believe what we believe? Then join us this fall as we study the Catechism of the Catholic Church with the second class of Faith Journey Catechetical Institute. Our instructors are from Des Moines as well as the St. Paul Seminary in Minnesota, and we are taking applications now. For more information, go to faithjourneyci.com or call 515-202-3176. Is it time for a new roof? Then it could be time for you to get to know Bell Construction. Bell Construction is a roofing company entering its 30th year of business. They specialize in residential re-roofs, like commercial jobs, and have the experience to meet all of your roofing needs with personal service. Bell Construction, 515-963-4494. My help comes from you. You're right here pulling you can Welcome to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. We are broadcasting from the Mercy Live Up Studios on 1150 AM, 88.5 FM, and 94.5 FM. I'm Joe Stapios, along with Father Zakowski. Today we're joined again by Adam Story. Adam is the head of the Marriage and Family Life Office for the Diocese of Des Moines. Prior to that, he served our country in the United States Marine Corps and served two tours in Iraq. Uh, Adam is a husband and father and joins us today. Welcome. Hey, thanks for having me. So, Adam, you are on as the uh, the voice of reason as we celebrate the 50th <laughs> anniversary uh, of Humana Vitae. So, Father Zach and I, uh, a couple months ago, were putting together you know, show topics uh, and then alongside them who we want to present on those topics. And one of the ones Father Zach suggested is, it, you know, this year uh, celebrates the 50th anniversary mm-hmm. of Humana Vitae. And you and your position uh, at the Marriage and Family Life Office thought it would be a great, a great person to have on. So, mm-hmm. thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, what is Humana Vitae, Adam? Okay, so <laughs> good question. So Humana Vitae is a, it's an encyclical or a teaching document uh, that, you know, popes fairly regularly. We've seen lots of encyclicals. Has Pope Francis done one? Uh, yeah, he's done a few, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he's done, well, Laudato Si was an encyclical. Yeah. Yeah. His document on holiness was an encyclical. Joy of the Gospel. Joy of the Gospel. Yeah. Joy of the Gospel. So, so Pope Francis has done a handful of these. They're much longer than this. Uh, most of them are. Yes. Um, his document on holiness, Pope Francis's, yeah. was uh, short, okay. which was charitable. Mm-hmm. Uh, but but uh, <laughs> Humanae Vitae is also charitable yes. in that sense. Yes. It's, a, it's a short document. It's, um, uh, uh, it's a short document that was given to the Catholic Church, so given to uh, the whole church, clergy, religious, lay people. Uh, and it's uh, on human life, but it's it's about... How does our how does our sexuality and especially in the either uh, postponing trying to postpone pregnancy, uh, how does that fit within the overall context of our sexuality? What are morally uh, permissible and morally impermissible ways uh, uh, to postpone pregnancy? This the document grew out of a debate, you know, with the invention of the hormonal contraceptive mm-hmm. pill. Um, there was a debate in the church about, you know, is this permissible or is it not? Uh, how can the church address this topic and her perennial teaching, the teaching that's never changed, but how do we present this teaching to the modern world? Uh, so it began with John the Twenty Third set up a small committee to explore this question. Paul VI expanded that committee, uh, added people to it to explore the question. Uh, and then in 1968, he released this document, which was uh, uh, a pretty uh, got a lot of attention. Controversial uh, people were uh, pretty fired up on both sides of the question. Uh, and now, 50 years later, we're able to look at it and recognize what a gift it was to the church uh, and how true it is. So I'm going to read kind of I call it the preface. It's before it's the first basically few sentences uh, of the document, and it goes. The transmission of human life is a most serious role in which married people collaborate collaborate freely and responsibly with God the Creator. It has always been a source of great joy to them, even though it sometimes entails many difficulties and hardships. Uh, 
The fulfillment of this duty has always posed problems to the conscience of married people, but the recent course of human society and the concomitant changes have provoked new questions. The church cannot ignore these questions, for they can the, for they concern matters intimately connected with life and happiness of human beings. So, he sets the stage there pretty early that listen, the marriage is not easy, mm-hmm. and, and there's big questions that we've always had to tackle. And because of, i.e., the pill and other things that are going on in society, the church needs to step up and address where we are morally. And so that kind of sets the stage for why this was even written in the first place. Uh, and I think, yeah, the, you mentioned the reception of it. Uh, some interesting feedback, I'm sure, was released upon uh, upon reading it for the first time. Yeah, you know, I think the reception of it, uh, I think looking back, uh, we can see it already, but... Uh, In history, that'll go down as one of the great tragedies uh, in the 20th century in the Catholic Church is is the reception of it, that we had this document that uh, was very articulate, uh, uh, very prophetic in what was written. Uh, It was it was a very uh, succinct and accessible uh, presentation, new presentation of the church's teaching uh, and at least in the West, it fell on deaf ears. It was ignored. It was reviled. Uh, and Paul VI had a tremendous amount of courage uh, and, I think, perseverance in, in the way he lived his life afterwards. Uh, it was a profound trial for him and a great act of courage that he released it. But a great tragedy in the church is the fact that it was ignored, especially looking back and seeing how important uh, that teaching has been for us. Well, and 50 years later, we... You know, we look at the at Humana Vitae, and you know it was meant to be a clarifying document. Of course, not not meant to be prophetic, uh, but it was. It turned mm-hmm. out to be prophetic. And can you talk about the four um, predictions that uh, Pope Paul VI made if contraception, be, you know, became widespread? Yeah, he kind of. Uh, predicted and spoiler alert they all came true <laughs> yeah absolutely so and I, this is an important point because uh the people who were advocating for acceptance of contraception we need to use this uh they were advocating it for it oftentimes uh within the church those who advocated for it were advocating for it with good intentions you know this is going to uh set marriages free it's going to strengthen marriages it's going to uh build greater unity between a couple it's going to cause greater stability for families uh and this is kind of the the arguments that they had and with good intentions uh they thought this was true well paul the 6 looked at it and he said no 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 uh, if we separate the procreative and unitive aspects of se- sex, if we accept contraception as, as something that's a good uh, for our families, he said certain things are going to result. He said there's going to be a general decline in morals. Uh, he said there's going to be a proliferation of divorce. Uh, he said there will be degradation of women. And he said eventually if we say that uh, you know any methods are permissible, he said I could even imagine governments uh, forcing certain methods uh, on their populations, on the people. Uh, and when Paul VI said this, and this is in paragraph 17, I think most people looked at it and they said, okay, come on, like going a little overboard, a little doomsday-ish here, uh, uh, you're a little bit crazy, uh, and yet we look back at it, and which one of those haven't been proven true? Uh, rise in divorce, degradation of women, decline in morals, and even government coercion, uh, we've seen all of these things to be true. Uh so so it truly is a prophetic document and and especially in the teaching of St John Paul II which came afterwards uh uh in his theology of the body we can see why this is the case why this happened why these predictions came true um uh but we've we've ran with this experiment and it's it's been tremendously harmful and tremendously harmful to the most vulnerable to to women to children uh uh particularly pernicious towards them, and I think that that's important to recognize. So he goes into what he calls, there's three parts to it, and the second part is called the doctrinal principles, uh, and he hits a handful of, of the uh, of the the reasons for the document and, and a little deeper into what this means to us as Catholics. And it says, so he starts with God's love and design, what that means for married love, responsible parenthood, observing the natural law. He talks about the union and the procreative aspects of sex, the lawfulness of or the faithfulness of God's design, the unlawful birth control methods, lawful therapeutic means. So he, he does talk about listen, 
birth control is is wrong in standard Catholic practices. But then he talks about there are exceptions to where these things are actually important. Uh, where, where so the Catholic Church isn't saying even if you're dying or you know the, there's some major complication, you still can't do it. He's saying in the way God designed us in natural human law. Uh, there needs to be two parts to it. And he talks about the unitive and the procreative. Uh, and this document, by the way, is very accessible. Uh, I read it yesterday, I don't know, probably 20, 30 minutes. It's not that long. Uh, and it's written in pretty everyday speak. So it's, I would recommend going out and getting a PDF on it. Uh, it's very easy to read. And our high schoolers, uh, who are very bright, but they they read it in class, mm-hmm. in Theology of the Body class. So yeah. yeah, and you know, Janet Smith pointed this out in a recent talk uh, where she said she's always astounded by how many people who reject this teaching without ever having read it. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. uh, they'll reject it and really not know what's in it. They'll, they'll have a sort of caricature of, of what the church teaches. Um, so it's, it's absolutely worth exploring. So, and I've, I know the tenets of it. I read the summaries of it. I never actually read the full document cover to cover until yesterday. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I read a lot of quotes of it. It is. I mean, it is very succinct to mm-hmm. the point, and it makes sense. One, one of my favorite quotes is when he kind of finishes out that second part, um, it says, concern of the church. And he basically calls out that, listen, I know this is not going to go. Like, people are not going to be jumping in the streets for joy when they read that I can't, that you're not allowed to use contraception. But it says, it is to be anticipated that perhaps not everyone will easily accept this particular teaching. There is too much clamorous outcry against the voice of the church, and this is intensified by modern means of communication. This is in 1968. But it comes as no surprise that the church that she, no less than her divine founder, is destined to be a quote-unquote sign of contradiction. She does not, because of this, evade the duty to impose on her, proclaiming humbly but firmly the entire moral law, both natural and evangelical. Since the church did not make either of these laws, she cannot be their arbiter, only their guardian and interpreter. So he's saying, listen, I didn't make, we didn't make the rules. This is not, I'm just interpreting this for you people. Listen, this is that the church is just saying, we're looking at everything. We're not going to make up stuff. We're going to call balls and strikes, and this is the way it is. Yeah, and you know, I think at the heart of the teaching, and and I've talked about this before, but is a sense of uh, stewardship. Uh, are we masters of our sexuality, or are we stewards of our sexuality? Uh, and especially in 1968, but even going beyond that, there was really a cultural sense that we're going to take charge. We're in control. This is all about me and what I want uh, and my own mastery. And Paul the VI uh, calls us again to say, no, this isn't something to grasp. Uh, this is something to receive as a gift uh, and to respond to as a gift. And you can do that. As, as John Paul II has pointed out, you can do that with great confidence and love and peace because you know that this is a gift from the good gift giver, that the Lord blesses us in our sexuality, that it's not something we need to change or we need to perfect. Uh, this is a gift given by someone who loves us more than we could ever be loved, who knows what's good for us more than we could possibly know. And when we receive that gift in a sense of stewardship, uh, I think it changes everything. I think it changes the way we approach sexuality. It changes the way we approach uh, our whole life, all things. Uh, this is a gift that I've received, uh, but that I'm not in control of. And what a beautiful thing that is. I like the uh, the appeal that Pope Paul VI makes to to scientists, to those who are... I did not know this was in there. Trying to, I, I trying to advance the, the good <laughs> good of society. He says... Our next appeal is to men of science. These can considerably advance the welfare of marriage and the family and also peace of conscience. If by pooling their efforts, they strive to elucidate more thoroughly the conditions favorable to a proper regulation of births. It is supremely desirable, and this was also the mind of Pope Pius XII, that medical science should, by the study of natural rhythms, succeed in determining a sufficiently secure basis for the chaste limitation of offspring. So uh, how does NFP, natural family planning, uh, come out of this? Yeah, and, you know, there's been that call uh, to men and women of science, and I think I think one of the areas that the church could grow in reception of this is to really support those efforts, uh, mm-hmm. to put our resources and our enthusiasm be- behind those efforts. Uh, But what came out of this is natural family planning, which is sort of an umbrella term for a lot of different methods that are scientifically developed, highly, highly effective, 
uh, ways of observing the signs of fertility and partnering with those things to either achieve or to postpone pregnancy. So uh, uh, again, it's that stewardship that we don't try to master our fertility. Uh, we partner with it. We look at it and we work together with the way that God has made our bodies. Uh, and we can either postpone pregnancy or they're highly effective and in fact more effective than artificial means uh, at helping couples achieve pregnancy when that's the desire. Um, but it is this beautiful teaching that Paul VI says, and he talks about responsible parenthood. He says, um, you know, this isn't just something God does to you. You partner with him. Mm -hmm. You're a co-creator. Co and you have, you have uh, authority here. You have responsibility here. Mm -hmm. uh, and God privileges uh, you enough to trust you uh, with partnering with him. Uh, and so we want to use we want to use uh, the signs of fertility. We want to observe those things. We want to use uh, scientific development uh, to work with nature. But but again, there's a distinction here: not to overcome it, uh, but to partner with it. And that's that's what you have with natural family planning. Well, I think it's interesting. Obviously, people look at the church and they're like, "Well, the church just wants you to have a hundred million kids, and just everyone has to have twenty kids, and that's just the way the church wants it to be." And and when you read this document, clearly. The Pope is, is appealing to scientists. To, guys, we realize there's a problem here, and people, in especially as we're living in cities and it's, and it's harder to have that many kids, we're looking for solutions. We just want these solutions to work within the framework that God made. So I, I found it really interesting that there's literally, in the appeal, there's appeal to bishops, priests, married couples, scientists are, are among the appeals that he makes in this to help us as we're striving to uh, to help married couples with this this issue, understanding that it's that it's hard. Uh, there's also a piece in there on the value of self discipline. Well, I think, and I think that that's a cornerstone too. You know, uh, and Bishop Robert Barron has talked about this, and a lot of people have talked about this in in any area of our life that we find important. Uh, we know that we want to, uh, you know, learn the rules. We want to practice discipline. We want to cultivate certain habits. You know, Bishop Barron, he talks about his golf game. He really wants to learn the rules of golf and to practice those skills so that he can play golf at a very high level. Uh, our desires, our love, uh, our sexuality is no different. That there, there is a certain ordering to it. There are certain habits. There are certain practices that cultivate excellent action. And in the moral sphere, we call that virtue. Uh, NFP is really a tool that fits within the virtue of chastity. So it's, mm -hmm. it's not the end. It's a means to an end. And chastity is the end. And the end of chastity is the habit, uh, the habitual disposition for to act with love and to act with integrity so that I'm properly oriented towards other people uh, in a loving and in a self-donative way, right? Uh, and so in our sexuality, you know, we practice this in golf, we practice this in academics, we practice it in all sorts of spheres of our life. And then with sexuality, we say, no way, man, I just need to let me be yeah. me. Mm -hmm. You know, I just need to act on every impulse as soon as I have it. You say, no, there needs to be ordering. There needs to be discipline. There needs to be habits here, uh, that need to be cultivated over time. Uh, and then you'll really know how to love someone. C.S. Lewis said uh, in Mere Christianity that if, if you acted upon every impulse to its f infinite end, he goes, you might, you might eat, you know, if you're taking gluttony, you might eat uh, twice as much as you should. In a yeah. Meal. He goes, but if you act upon your sexual impulse every single time, you could have thousands of children. Like, <laughs> mm -hmm. there's a re God has ordered us to have to use self-control uh, in various aspects of our lives. Uh, and I think, again, that's right in this directive. I Again, so any final thoughts before I encourage everyone to read this thing? Any final parting words? I just think for, and maybe you could sp speak more specifically to young men about, um, you know, I think they're familiar with the discipline of sports. Yeah. Could you speak a little bit to that? Yeah. With well, virtue? Yeah, I would just say, um, you know, the world invites us to live a mediocre life. Uh, Christ invites us to lead a beautiful and a, a adventurous and a dramatic life. Uh, but the way that we do that in every aspect of our lives uh, is we need to grow in holiness. We need to cultivate discipline. We need to cultivate self-control. We need to cultivate selfless, selflessness. And that's true in our sexuality as much as it is in any anywhere else. That the church is teaching what it offers us in love is the opportunity to love excellently, not mediocrely. 
Well, thank you, Adam, for joining us again. I can't encourage you enough. Go out, uh, download it, uh, Humane Vitae. Just search for it. You'll be able to find a PDF on it. Uh, and I think as you read it, you'll just you'll come to the realization that you know, 50 years later, that what was said, these words that were said and so harshly criticized uh, at the time of their uh, of their writing. Uh, are clearly have clearly come true, and I think the Catholic Church, when we look back upon this, uh, as we will with so many issues, I mean, I think the issue of abortion is a great example that when we are looking back hundreds of years from now, we're going to, as a country, be embarrassed that this ever was, was a, a legal thing that we were doing. I think similarly with the Church, we're going to look back in time and history, and we're going to see this as a, as a great teaching of the Church, a great yes uh, to our sexuality and the way God ordered us, uh, and then we continue to unpack it from John Paul II on forward. So I uh, strongly encourage you to go out and, and read the encyclical of Humanae Vitae. Well, stick around. We're going to head to a short break, and we'll be right back. This is Iowa Catholic Radio. Thank you, Construction Professionals, for your support of Dowling Catholic Sports 365. Construction Professionals is a family-owned business dedicated to our customers. Whether designing, building, or renovating, we are here to better serve you. cpcustomhomes.com Do you enjoy a great time filled with fun, games, and even better food? I know I do. The annual St. Mary of Nazareth auction is just around the corner. The event is on Saturday, October 6th. Doors open at 6 p.m. with several fantastic items up for auction. Got kids? No problem. Free babysitting will be provided. The cost of admission is $15 for one, $25 per couple. For advanced tickets, call the parish office at 515-276-4042 or pick some up after any weekend mass. St. Mary of Nazareth Church is located at 4600 Meredith Drive in Des Moines. My help comes from you. You're right here, pulling me through. You carry Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. I am Joe Stopulis, along with Father Zach Kautsky. Great to have Adam Story on uh, in studio. Adam knows his stuff. Yeah, friend really of the show. Well. Friend of the show, uh, regular reoccurring guest, and a wealth of knowledge, especially on all things marriage and family life. Uh, I know you had some other recommendations for for, for follow kind of further reading. Sure, one of my uh, professors in a, a couple classes I've taken is uh, Dr. Janet Smith, and Dr. Janet Smith is really uh, known around the world for her um, defense and speaking about uh, Humanae Vitae. She is on the uh, she is a consultor on the Papal Commission for the Family, I believe it is. Um, so she you know goes to Rome occasionally, and she's like met with the Holy Father with this group. Um, so she really advises uh, the Holy Father, the Holy See, about issues with the family and, and marriage. Um, but she's a, she's currently a professor at Sacred Heart Seminary in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, she wrote Contraception, Why Not? And also, uh, recently, Why Humana Vitae is Still Right, uh, 50 years later. And so uh, if you want more information, she's a great source. Um and she's witty and uh, she's a lot of fun. So uh, it's kind of a it's a tough topic at times, but uh, she does a great job. I think talking about the importance of humanae vitae. Uh, other resources. This goes a little further than than that. Uh, you know, I think the segue from humanae vitae to theology of the body is kind of a mm -hmm. natural one. So after you kind of get uh, the your groundwork on humanae vitae, you know, the next natural place to look is, is theology of the body. You know, we've yeah. talked about that, had some episodes. Or love and responsibility. Yep. Yeah. Um, but see, then with theology of the body, I wouldn't recommend you go read that, just pick up off the shelves, because unlike right. humanae vitae, not nearly as accessible for mm -hmm. the lay person. Uh, I would recommend maybe men and women are from, from Eden. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Mary Healy. Yep. Or Christopher West did uh, an introduction, beginner's guide to... Yep to a theology of the body. But again, as Catholics, you know, this is an important part of our faith. I think it's easy for us to, to shy away from because it is a touch, tough teaching. And, you know, and when Jesus had tough teachings in the New Testament, people walked away from him. That happened all the time. And the, the, the church, as we mentioned earlier in the last segment, uh, is not sheepish about it. They're saying, listen, that we are going to interpret the laws that God gave us, and we're going to teach our, our people what the correct way to uh, to live life is, uh, and that's what the Catholic Church did in this teaching. So, for Father Zach Kautsky, I am Joe Stopulis. Thanks for joining us on Man Up on Iowa Catholic Radio. It's time to man up. Man Up, inspiring men to live out their call to holiness with Joe Stopulis and Father Zach Kautsky. Heard Mondays at 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. on Iowa Catholic Radio. Brought to you by Construction Professionals.